Greetings and welcome to Intermediate Algebra Rational Expressions and Rational Functions. Lesson 5.7, Division of Polynomials. In division of polynomials, there's two types that we're going to work with. Dividing a polynomial by a monomial. So by polynomial meaning multiple terms by a monomial, a one term object. And then the second thing that we're going to be doing is dividing a polynomial by a polynomial. So let's take a quick look at dividing a polynomial by a monomial. So for example, if we have something like 10x to the fifth minus 15x to the fourth plus 20x cubed, and we want to divide this by 5x squared. There's a couple ways that we can look at this process. One is, well, really, if I want to write it the long way, 10x to the fifth minus 15x to the fourth plus 20, 20x cubed, that's divided by 5x squared. It's just a different way of looking at this problem. But in this case, Division is the same thing as multiplication by the reciprocal. So we have 10x to the fifth minus 15x to the fourth minus 20x cubed multiplied by 1 over 5x squared. It's kind of the long way about, but let's take this step by step. Now what I want to do is distribute this multiplication back through. We have 10x to the fifth times 1 over 5x squared minus 15x to the fourth times 1 over 5x squared minus 20x cubed times 1 over 5x squared. I'm going to do this multiplication. All right, 10x to the fifth times 1 is, well, 10x to the fifth all over 5x squared. 15x to the fourth all over 5x squared minus 20x cubed all over 5x squared. From here, I get to reduce each of these fractions. Okay. 5 goes into 5 once, 10 goes in, or 5 goes into 10 twice. And if I have x to the fifth over x squared, that's really going to be x to the fifth minus 2. So here's what I have so far 2x to the fifth minus 2. And I'm going to use the same type of uh, action for the other two terms. Reduce the numbers. 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 15 three times. And x to the fourth over x squared is x to the fourth minus 2. 3x to the fourth minus 2. And the last term, 5 goes into 5 once. 5 goes into 20 four times x cubed over x squared is x cubed minus 2. So I have 4x cubed minus 2. Last thing I want to do is do that subtraction of the exponents. And we get 2x cubed minus 3x squared minus 4x to the first power. So I can leave that off. This is our solution to the problem. Now, these middle steps, uh, I'm just going to bracket those, these kind of middle steps, I'm generally going to do in my head, which means that from the first, from the beginning problem, I'm going to immediately jump into writing them separately. The reason is because I can change it to division, I can change it to multiplication of the reciprocal, and I can distribute 
that multiplication throughout all of our polynomial. That's the reason why I get to jump from having a polynomial divided by a monomial, monomial to break that apart into monomials divided by monomials. Okay. In the future, I'm just going to jump to breaking it apart. But the reason why is because I have all this math in between those two steps. Let's take a look at this problem in a second method, and that is long division. So I'm going to rewrite this as a long division problem. 5x squared divided into 10x to the fifth minus 15x to the fourth plus 20x cubed. All right, so just like long division, I'm going to take what's on the outside and divide it into each of these terms on the inside. So that it becomes a smaller problem in essence, or multiple smaller problems. So I have 10 x to the fifth divided by 5x squared. Now, 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 10 twice x to the fifth divided by x squared is going to be x to the fifth minus 2 and that gives me 2x cubed. All right, just like a long division problem, 2x cubed and now I'm going to multiply back the 2x cubed with the 5x squared and see what I get. 2 times 5 is 10. x cubed times x to the fifth x squared is x to the fifth. I subtract these two and I'm left with 0. Bring down the next term. Not just the next number, but the whole entire term. And I get a negative 15 x to the fourth. And I repeat the process. I look at negative 15 x to the fourth and I divide that by 5x squared and I'm going to get 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into negative 15, negative 3 times. x to the fourth divided by x squared is x to the fourth minus 2 and that gives me a negative 3x squared. So a negative 3 x squared goes on top. Now I take the negative x squared and I multiply it back to 5x squared and see what happens. Negative 3 times 5 is negative 15. x squared times x squared is x to the fourth and I subtract this. That's just part of the process. Those turn into positives and I'm left with 0 bring down the next term plus 20 x cubed. I repeat the process. Just off to the side, 20 x cubed divided by 5 x squared. 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 20 four times. x cubed over x squared will be x cubed minus 2 and that gives me 4x to the first. Well, x to the first is x, so I have a plus 4x. Go through again, take the plus 4x and multiply that to the 5x squared and I get 20x cubed. Oops, forgot my zero there. I subtract it. I get zero. My answer is 2 x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x. It is not a different answer than what we had before. If I scroll up on my page, you'll see we get the same answer. And that should be a plus 4, sorry about that. But a different method of doing it. Let's try another problem. This time I am only going to do the first method by breaking it apart into separate fractions. 8x cubed y to the fifth minus 16x squared y squared plus 4x to the fourth y cubed all over negative 
x squared y. So I'm going to jump to breaking this apart. 8x cubed, y to the fifth, all over negative 2xy squared, x squared y, minus 16x squared, y squared, all over negative 2x squared, y, plus 4x to the fourth, y cubed, all over negative 2x squared, y. Now I'm going to treat these problems like little separate division problems, doing them one at a time. Negative 2 goes into negative 2 once. Negative 2 goes into 8 negative 4 times. x cubed over x squared is going to be x cubed minus 2. y to the fifth over y is going to be y to the fifth minus 1. So I get negative 4 x cubed minus 2, y to the fifth minus 1. Next term. Negative 2 goes into negative 2 once. Negative 2 goes into negative 16, a plus 8 times. Well, x squared over x squared is going to be x squared minus 2. y over y squared is y squared minus 1. I am left with a plus 8x to the second minus 2, y to the 2 minus 1. Last term, negative 2 goes into negative 2 once, negative 2 goes into positive 4 and negative 2 times. x to the fourth over x squared is x to the fourth minus 2, and y cubed over y is y cubed minus 1 minus 2x to the 4th minus 2, and y squared minus 1. Last step I need to do is reduce these or simplify these exponents. Negative 4x, because 3 minus 2 is 1, y to the 4th plus 8x to the 0 is 1, so we get to leave that out now y to the 2 minus 1 is y, minus 2, x to the 4 minus 2 is x squared, y to the 2 minus 1 is y, here is our solution. Here's another problem, 10a to the 4th b squared plus 8ab cubed minus 12a cubed b plus 6ab all over 4a squared b squared. Again, I'm going to use the method of breaking this apart into uh, individual monomial division. So breaking it apart into separate fractions, that will give me 10a to the 4th b squared all over 4a squared b squared plus 8ab cubed all over 4a squared b squared minus 12a cubed b all over 4a squared b squared plus 6ab over 4a squared b squared. Now each one of these will be reduced. 2 goes into 4 twice, 2 goes into 10 5 times. Uh, a to the 4th over a squared is a to the 4 minus 2 b squared over b squared, well, is b squared minus 2. And that gives me, I'm going to reduce this as I go, 5a squared over 2. Okay. b2 two minus 2 is 0, so that's a 1. Okay, 4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 8 twice. Well, this is going to be a to the 1 minus 2. This is b cubed minus 2. And I get 2a to the negative 1b. I'll deal with that negative 1 exponent in a moment. Okay. 
4 goes into 4 once, 4 goes into 12 three times. a cubed over b a squared is a to the 3 minus 2, and this is b to the first minus 2. 3. a to the first, b to the negative 1. Again, I'll deal with that exponent in the next round. Okay. 2 goes into 4 twice. 2 goes into 6 three times. This is going to be a to the 1 minus 2. This is b to the 1 minus 2. And I'm left with 3a to the negative 1, b to the negative 1 all over 2. Now I'm not allowed to leave my exponents in negative form. So to do that, any negative exponents in the numerator, I'm going to bring down to the denominator they become positive. 5a squared over 2 plus 2b over a minus 3a over b plus 3 over 2ab. All my exponents are positive, everything's been reduced, there is my answer. In the previous examples, they have all been polynomials divided by a monomial. In that case, we were able to break apart the fraction and do individual divisions or, reduce, uh, or reduction of those fractions to get our solution. When we are working with a polynomial with a polynomial, we don't have that luxury. But we'd still have multiple uh, methods on how to solve it. First thing is you might try to factor it and see if it's reducible. If it is, great. If not, then our only choice is to do long division. So here's a problem, x squared minus 6xy minus 7y squared all over x plus y. I'm going to do this both ways. One, I'm going to try and factor it and see what happens. Second, I'm going to use long division. If I try to factor, let's see what happens. Just for emphasis, I'm putting parentheses around the denominator. That one's already factored. Okay, for an x squared, I need an x and an x. For a y squared, I need a y and a y. Now I just need to deal with the numbers. Two numbers that multiply to a negative 7 but add to a negative 6. That would be a negative 7 times a positive 1. Okay, now that I've factored my numerator, I'm going to see if anything is uh, reducible. Well, x plus y goes into x plus y, y once. x plus y goes into x plus y once. So it looks like my solution, my answer, is x minus 7y. That wasn't so bad. If it is factorable, this is generally, well, if you're good at factoring anyway, it's usually the fastest way to go about it. But if it's not factorable, or if you don't like factoring, you can always resort back to long division. So let's see this problem as long division. x plus y divided into x squared minus 6xy minus 7y squared. The secret is I'm going to take the first term of what I'm dividing by and divide it into the first term of what I'm dividing it all into. And I get this little side project or side problem of x squared divided by x. That's going to be x two to the min two, uh, to the two minus one, which is x to the first, which is x. Okay, x. Now. I'm going to take this x and I'm going to multiply it by everything outside of the division. x times x is x squared. x times plus y is plus xy. Okay, part of the division process is I need to subtract 
what I just multiplied. It's just part of the process. x squared minus x squared is, well, 0. And negative 6xy minus xy is minus 7xy. Part of the process, bring down the next term, negative 7y squared. Now we're going to repeat the process. Oh, stupid thing. I'm going to take the x and divide it by the first term. Divide it into the first term. So negative 7xy divided by x. Well, x over x is just 1, leaving me negative 7y. Okay, minus 7y. I'm going to take this negative 7y, oops, and go back and multiply everything outside. Negative, 7x, uh, ne negative 7y times x is negative 7xy. Negative 7y times y is negative 7y squared. Now we need to subtract all of that part of the process. Well, a negative negative is going to be a positive. A negative negative distributing that negative throughout, everything's going to be positive down on the bottom. Negative 7xy plus 7xy is a 0. Negative 7y squared plus 7y squared is also a 0. We are done. Our answer is x minus 7y. It is the same that we got in factoring. It's the same answer. And you might be saying, well, why would I ever use this long division? It's horrible. It's a lot of steps. I got to remember a lot of things. Because sometimes your numerator is not factorable, then what do you do? Well, you need a method that you can fall back on. And this method of long division is something you can fall back on. All right, here's another problem. 2x squared minus 7x plus 9 divided by x minus 2. You can try and factor it, and you'll see, well, it's not factorable. Therefore, our only recourse is doing long division. So x minus 2 divided into 2x squared minus 7x plus 9. We're going to look at the first terms and do that side division. 2x squared divided by x, that's going to be 2x. Okay, now this 2x, I'm going to go back and multiply everything on the outside. 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x times negative 2 is negative 4x. Part of the process, subtract everything. 2x squared minus 2x squared is 0. Negative 7x minus a negative 4x is really negative 7x plus 4x, so that's minus 3x. Bring down the next term. Okay, so now we're going to take the x and divide it into negative 3x. Negative 3x divided by x, that leaves us a negative 3. I'm going to take this negative 3, multiply it by everything outside of the uh, division. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6. Part of the process, subtract everything. Negative 3x minus a negative 3x is 0. Plus 9 positive 9 minus 6 is positive 3. We have a remainder. So here is our answer. 2x minus 3 
plus 3x over uh, x minus 2. That's our fractional part. And as you see, because we had a remainder, this did not, x minus 2 did not divide evenly into 2x squared minus 7x plus 9. Let's attempt another problem. I've already set this up to do long division. I know I'm going to need to use long division, so I've already set it up to use long division. But there might be a little issue that I might run into if I'm not super careful. If you're looking at the exponents of x, it decreases from x cubed down to just x. No x squareds. To try and anticipate uh, some problems I might run into, I'm going to actually rewrite this problem. I'm going to write it as 2x minus 4 divided into 4x cubed plus 0x squared, that's still 0 and adding 0 doesn't change anything, minus 6x minus 11. And you might be asking, why in the world did you do that? It's just a holder place. It's just to give me some room to uh, manage my numbers a little bit better having those x squareds there. And you'll see as we start working with this long division process that this does indeed help me. Okay, now let's start the long division process. 2x divided into 4x cubed. A lot of this you can probably do just in your head, and that's okay. All right, 2 goes into 4 twice. x goes into x cubed x squared times. 2x squared. Now I'm going to take my value to x squared and multiply it by everything outside. 2x squared times x squared, uh, 2x squared times 2x is 4x cubed. 2x squared times negative 4 is negative 8x squared. Now let's subtract everything. 4x cubed minus 4x cubed is 0. This is where I would have had run into an issue. If I would have just kept it as the original problem, my x squareds would line up with the x, and there's a possibility, just if I wasn't paying attention, that would, I would do that subtraction and come up with the wrong answer because you can't subtract negative 6x's uh, with any x squareds. Those are not like terms. So by at to include this 0x squared, they will now align very nicely. Okay, 0x squared minus a negative x squared is a positive x squared, 8x squared. Bring down the next term, minus 6x. Repeat the process. 8x squared divided by 2x gives me 4x plus 4x. Repeat the process now with the multiplication. Multiply 4x by everything outside of the division. 4x times 2x is 8x squared. 4x times negative 4 is negative 16x. Subtract. Okay, the x is uh, the 8x squared minus 8x squared is 0 negative 6x minus a negative 16x is a positive 10x. Bring down the next term. Repeat the process. 10x divided by 2x is 5 plus 5. Multiply everything on the outside. 5x times 2x is 10x. 5x times negative 4 is negative 20. Subtract. 10x minus 10x is 0. Negative 11 minus a negative 20 is a positive 9. We have a remainder. Plus 9 over 2x minus 4. Now I do want to mention, if my remainder was even, as in an 8 or a 6 or a 16, this denominator for my fraction 
can be written as 2 times x minus 2. And if I had like an 8, that means that's reducible. Luckily, we have a 9, so we don't have to reduce it. Here is my quotient. 2x squared plus 4x plus 5 plus 9 over 2x minus 4. All right, let's approach a problem a little bit differently. Let's factor x cubed plus 9x squared plus 26x plus 24 completely and see if x plus 2 is one of the factors. Generally speaking, when we have four terms, we're going to want to do this by grouping. x cubed plus 9x, I'll just take the 2 and factor this into x squared x plus 9. And I'll take the last two, 26x plus 24 equals, well, definitely um, a 2 can come out, let's see, leaving me with 13x plus mm, 12. Well, that was absolutely not helpful. Uh, even if I regroup it, that's not going to help. So factoring this guy uh, I don't see a way to do it in any of our methods that we've learned thus far, except we can use long division. If x plus 2 is a factor, then we will have no remainder. We'll get the quotient, we'll get the x plus 2, and if there is no remainder, that means that x plus 2 is indeed a factor. Okay. So let's try some long division here. x plus 2 divided into x cubed plus 9x squared plus 26x plus 24. And let's see what happens. x goes into x cubed. If you need to work it out on the side, go for it x squared. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times 2 is plus 2x squared. Subtract. And I am left with 7x squared. Bring down the next term. x goes into 7x squared, a positive 7x time. Now I'm going to multiply. 7x times x is 7x squared. 7x times 2 is a positive 14x. Subtract. And I am left with 12x. Bring down the next term. Okay. x goes into 12x, positive 12 times. 12 times x is 12x. 12 times 2 is positive 24. Let's subtract all of that, and we are left with 0. 0 is our remainder. Perfect. So here's what we know so far. x plus 2 times x squared plus 7x plus 12 will get us back to x cubed plus 9x squared plus 26x plus 24. Now it does say factor completely. And we can factor the trinomial into two binomials, x squared, x squared, they're both positive. Two numbers to multiply to 12, but add to 7, 3 and 4. So we have x plus 2 times x plus 3 times x plus 4. We factored completely, and we also figured out that x plus 2 is one of its factors. All right, I know this is big and meaty, but that's it for this lecture. Until next time, be seeing you.